King Josiah is an unlikely heroic figure in the Old Testament histories. His deviant father Ammon only reigned for two years before being killed by his own servants. And his grandfather Manasseh was notorious for evil anti-Yahweh practices that were a main cause for the judgment of Judah. Though he was only two generations away from Hezekiah, a good king of Judah, he was two debased generations away. The Book of the Law had been forgotten in the halls of the temple, and a multitude of pagan practices had regained their functional influence in the religious life of Judah. 2 Chronicles 34 tells us that Josiah was set up as king when he was eight years old, that he began to seek the Lord when he was 16, and began to cleanse the land of pagan practices when he was 20. Then, when he was 26 years old, he began to repair the Temple of Jerusalem, propelling the nation into a new time of cleansing and reform when the Law of Moses was found. While Josiah receives one of the few glowing reviews by the writers of Kings and Chronicles, his violent death seems out of place and rather unexplained. The Bible records that when he was 39 years old, Josiah marched out to interrupt Pharaoh Necho of Egypt, who was marching north to help the king of Assyria take a last stand against the Babylonian Median alliance that had all but ruined Assyria. This journey and final battle is well attested to in history. Pharaoh Necho wins the battle against Josiah, continues to march to Haran, where the Egyptian-Assyrian alliance loses to Babylon. On his way back to Egypt, Necho exercises his new control over Judah by taking Josiah's son to Egypt and imposing national taxes on Judah. The death of Josiah in his confrontation with Necho brought the loss of Judah's independence as a nation.